One. Great. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us. My name is Marwan Hade. I'm a senior program manager on the Microsoft Flow team, and joining me today is... I'm Emma Cooper. I'm a program manager on the Power Apps team. And we're here to talk to you about how you can build and extend applications with Office for, uh, or for Office with Power Apps and Microsoft Flow. Now, you're here because your team has a giant backlog of apps and workflows but not enough time, money, or manpower to implement them. Or you're an enterprise developer or an ISV and need to quickly build a solution for your consumer for data that lives in Office or in Azure. Now, before we get started, how many of you have heard of Power Apps and or Flow? Sweet. And how many of you have built one or more Power Apps or Flow? OK, so fewer of you. Um, so what we'll do today is we'll actually talk about both Power Apps and Flow. We'll set some stage uh, in terms of what the products are. We'll also dive a little deeper into the capabilities. Before we do that, we want to talk a little bit about the momentum we've seen with both of these products. So we have over 1.1 million monthly active users over Flow, Power Apps, and CDS, with over 213,000 organizations betting their platforms on us. Notable customers include NASCAR, Standard Bank, TransAlta, and g, &G Pepsi. And you can read about the case studies for each of these companies on our respective websites. So in today's session, what we'll do is we'll start off by setting some context about how Power Apps and Flow fit in to the Microsoft Business Application Platform. We'll then deep a little, uh, we'll dive a little deeper into Flow and how it integrates with Office 365. So we'll talk about our Teams integration. We'll talk about how Flow integrates with Excel. We'll also discuss how Flow integrates with SharePoint and how approvals fits into the giant picture. And then we'll move on to talk about how Power Apps integrates with Office, covering Microsoft Graph and SharePoint and Teams. Uh, and then we'll also talk about how pro developers can plug into this ecosystem and follow it up with a roadmap of where we're headed. And for those of you that attended a session I did earlier, um, you'll notice that um, a lot of the demos we'll talk about from the flow side will be similar, but a good chunk of the session, uh, almost half of the session, will be devoted to talking about Power Apps and how that fits into the giant picture. So just a little housekeeping before we get started. All right, so the Microsoft Business Application Platform. I'm going to make a really bold statement here, so brace yourself. Business software is hard. Said anyone who's ever built it, bought it, or used it. Now, all of us want to deliver a great uh, experience within our companies, but writing software is expensive. It's time consuming, or you just don't have enterprise capabilities. For example, somebody in finance is trying to get some data. They're going to try to get a couple of inputs from users in the organization. Now, They'd love to write an application, but if they turn to IT, IT is going to say, hey, no way. This just doesn't meet our priority bar. Uh, you're going to have to figure out another way to get that data. But what we're trying to do with the business application platform is we're trying to change that paradigm. We're trying to put the power of creating applications, creating workflows, creating graphics in the hands of the citizen developer, the person that understands that data the best. Now, when you think about any modern business, there are three things that are key to that enterprise. First and foremost, you want a way to understand how your business is doing. You want, a way to, you want a way to measure the key performance indicators of your business. You can do that using Power BI. Next, you want a way to be able to act on that data. You want a way to set up a process that allows you to collect data as well as disseminate information. You can do that using Power Apps. And lastly, you want a way to automate the processes in your business. And that's where Flow comes into the picture. Now, powering both of these awesome circles, Power BI, Microsoft Flow, Power Apps, is the common data service. Common data service for apps on the left-hand side, and common data service for analytics. Now, the idea behind these services, you can pull in your data from different services. You can also use these data sources to push out data. So for example, if you're, using, uh, if you're building a Power App, you can put your inputs and outputs into the common data service and build applications around it. Now, the secret sauce behind all of these products is a rich layer of data connectors. 
We have data connectors for SharePoint, for OneDrive for Business, for Teams, for Facebook, for Instagram, for Slack, you name it, and we have a rich data connector for it. And we'll dive into some of those connectors a little later in this presentation. Now, the great news about this entire platform is that it's built on Azure. So you get the enterprise-grade reliability, scalability, and compliance. Also, this data isn't just built for Office 365. You can also use it for Dynamics 365. You can also build standalone apps. In fact, we're coming out with a talent-based application a little later in the year based on all of these products. Now, when we talk about um, Power Apps, we generally discuss Canvas apps. So this allows you to start with a rich user experience uh, where you can move things around, you can interact with rich controls, you have role-based apps, you can connect to over 200 different sources. We're also rolling out a new notion called model-driven apps, where you can actually build an application automatically based on your data model with relationships and business processes out of the box. This will be coming out a little later in the year. Now today, we're going to focus almost exclusively on Canvas apps. Similarly, on the flow side, um, traditionally when you think of flow, we think of two types. Uh, traditionally, automated flows. You can create anything from a simple two-step flow to an advanced flow with parallel branches, conditions, looping, and much, much more. We're also now adding a new concept called business process flows, which gives you a set of stages. It's almost like a state machine where you can move from one stage to another depending on changes in your data. And this data lives in the common data service. More on this a little later in some of our other presentations. Today, we're going to be focusing exclusively on automated flows. So let's get into that. What is Microsoft Flow? Microsoft Flow is a cloud-based service that helps non-developers, your citizen developers, to work smarter and more efficiently by, working, by automating workflows across your favorite apps and services. Now, when we talk about Flow, there's four key scenarios that come to mind. First and foremost, you can use Flow to get notifications. For example, if your manager emails you, you can send a push notification to your phone. Or if a new file gets added to SharePoint, you can send an email with details about that file and a link to it. You can also use Flow to copy files. For example, if something gets added to, let's say, OneDrive, um, let's say you're taking pictures on your phone and you're out on a business trip, you can take pictures, it gets put into OneDrive, you can set up a flow that then copies those pictures from OneDrive into another data source like SharePoint or OneDrive for Business. You can also use Flow to collect data. For example, you can find out what people are saying about you on Twitter, um, run some sentiment analysis on it to see what they're saying and whether it's positive or negative, put it into a SQL database and connect it to Power BI to spot trends over time. You can do the same thing for issues as well. If you want to know what people are saying about you on Lithium, for instance, what are the type of comments, you can take that issue and directly open up uh, um, an alert in uh, something like Jira. And lastly, you can automate approvals. Now, when we talk about workflows, approvals are almost synonymous. And in Flow, we have a first-class experience for approvals. So you can assign an approval to any individual in your organization. Uh, those uh, approvers will get a push notification, an actionable email. They'll be able to see their approvals in a unified approval center where they can respond to something and you can capture what they've said. We'll look at that a little deeper in this presentation. What makes up an automated flow? Now, there's two fundamental concepts when it comes to a flow. One is a trigger. It's the event that kicks off the flow. Now, there are three types of triggers. It could be a manual trigger. So it could be if somebody's pressing a button. For example, somebody could be pressing a flick button or a BTTN button. And we'll actually give away flick buttons at the end, so stay tuned for that. Um, it could also be a, uh, a virtual button in SharePoint, um, in Excel. We'll talk about that. Uh, or on the Flow mobile app. Now, your flow could also be a schedule-based flow. So it runs every minute, every hour, every week, month, year, et cetera. And lastly, and most commonly, your flow could be based on an event in the cloud. For example, in this case, when a record is created in CRM, when a lead is created, the flow will get triggered. Now, actions is the other fundamental concept when it comes to flow. It's what the flow does when the trigger condition is met. Now, in this case, what I'm doing is I'm sending an email. So I'm actually sending an email to the owner of that lead, and I'm asking them to follow up on the lead. And in the email body, I'm including information from the trigger, like the name of the topic as well as the last name. And that's the beauty of flow. When you use different triggers and actions, you can flow data from the trigger into different actions and from one action into another action. 
Now, what is the secret sauce behind Flow? It's the connectivity to over 200 different cloud services. We have connectivity to file providers, to databases, to CRM software, to web APIs, to productivity apps, and much, much more. If you're trying to connect a SQL on-prem, you connect a SharePoint on-prem, we have you covered using a data gateway. Um, if you have an API that we haven't built yet, you can use custom connectors. You can also use a custom connector to integrate your existing line of business APIs, be it on-prem or on the cloud. To help you get started, we have thousands of templates for each of our services. The idea behind a template is that it's ready to go. You just come in, give your credentials, tell us which folder to listen to, tell us which account to use, and boom, your flow is ready to go. Now, I'm going to show you a demo in, in just a couple of minutes here, but I wanted to introduce another concept called expressions. Now, this is brand new in Flow. We just rolled it out um, in the last couple of months or so. We've had it in Logic Apps. Uh, Flow is built on top of Logic Apps. But this is a first class experience that we've just added into the workflow designer. Now, there are many reasons to use expressions. First and foremost, it allows you to convert data types. What does that mean? Essentially, if you have something that is a string, you can take that string and cast it as an integer. You can also use expressions to perform simple inline calculations, like string manipulation. For example, you want to get the substring. You want to get an index of a certain character. You can use it for basic math, like addition, subtraction, division, et cetera. You can also use it to handle optional values, to do conditional statements, and most importantly, to iterate over lists. So you can get the, the length of an array, for example, the first element, the last element, et cetera. So let's talk about Flow and Office 365. How does Office 365, how does Flow plug into the richness of Office 365? Well, Flow is the automation tool for Office 365. We have connectors for all of the, Office, of the major Office 365 services, from Outlook and SharePoint and OneDrive for Business to Teams, Excel, Planner, Forms, Yammer, and OneNote. And there's much more. I just couldn't fit it into this nice 3x3 three grid. Three uh, we also have integrations into SharePoint and OneDrive for Business, for Teams, for Excel, for Outlook. The idea behind these integrations is that while you're working on your data, while you're on your SharePoint list, or while you're on your file in OneDrive for Business, we have contextual information of what you're working on. And we can run a flow based on that data. We'll dive a little deeper into both of these capabilities. Now, the great news is that both Flow and Power Apps are included with Office 365 and Dynamics 365, so you already have the tools, uh, the skill set, and now the license necessary to get started with Flow. This is brand new. Flow is integrated into Microsoft Teams, so you can post uh, messages to any team channel. Within Teams itself, you can access your personal flows, you can create new flows, you can access the approval center. You can use the Flow bot, furthermore, to trigger off any manual flows. And this integration is just going to get better over time. This is a big investment area for us. We want to make it easier to build workflows as you're interacting with the rest of your team. And I want to take a moment to introduce a brand new integration. Uh, those of you that were in my session earlier have, have seen what this slide does. Uh, but for the rest of you, revealing for the very first time, boom, is the flow integration in Excel. Um, so you can now connect your Excel table data to Outlook, to Dynamics, Teams, approvals, and all of, the flow, all of Flow's 200 services. How do we do that, you might ask? Uh, well, we're introducing a brand new trigger called For a Selected Row. Uh, what this trigger does is it gets context of the row that you've selected in Excel. It passes that data along. We then use a launch panel experience embedded directly within your spreadsheet, where you can interact with that row add in any manual inputs, and run the flow. Now, the great thing about this integration is that the flow runs in the context of the user. For those of you that have heard of flow and used flow before, traditionally, when the flow runs, it runs using the maker's credentials. Well, with this manual integration, you can now have the invoker bring in their own credentials. So if an email is sent, for example, it's sent as the invoker. If a message is posted to Teams, it's done using the invoker's credentials. Accompanying that change is the ability to share a flow with run-only permissions. What does that mean? In Flow, we have two types of permissions, or two types of permissions. Uh, one, you can add somebody as a co-owner, or you can add somebody as a run-only user. With co-owner permissions, they have full edit privileges, so they can make any changes that they want. With run-only permissions, they have the ability to run the flow, but not edit it. 
When are we shipping this? This is starting out as an office add-in. It'll be in the box later, and it's coming soon to a spreadsheet near you. We're hard at work. We will be getting this out very soon. Now, I've been talking for a while, so what I'm going to do is now give you a demo of flow integration in Excel. We'll also establish the basics of what a trigger is, what an action is, as we go through this demo. OK, so let me set the scenario a little bit. So let's imagine that M and I work for a large um, energy production company called Cronus Energy. Now, as a commercial analyst, uh, we go out and understand uh, what are the energy requirements for our company. Now, these requirements come in terms of what is the target energy that we want to generate so that we can make a healthy revenue and a healthy profit. And um, what is also the minimum energy below which I'll be assessed a fine from the government? So the way the energy production, uh, energy industry works uh, typically is that you, you set a bid for how much energy you're going to generate. And if you're below a certain threshold, you're assessed a fine. Now, there's also a maximum energy, beyond which there's simply no demand. So there's no point in generating any additional energy. We also establish the price, and it automatically calculates, because we're in Excel, the revenue and profit. Now, what I want to do with this data is I want to take this data and I want to create an item in SharePoint for my capacity team, my operations capacity manager, to go up and follow up on this data and choose the turbines that we're going to use to generate this, uh, this energy. I also want to send an alert in Teams to the rest of my team asking them um, and, and informing them that I've just created a new energy target. So let's see how Flow can help me achieve this. So what I'll do is I will um, head over to the Data tab, and I'll select the Flow command here. This opens up an embedded experience directly in the spreadsheet that I'm working on. Here you'll see some flows that I've created that act on this spreadsheet and this table in particular. I can also create from blank by clicking here. This just gives me the four selected road triggers. Or I can also create from a template. So you have templates that allow you to connect to Outlook, to another Excel spreadsheet, to create an approval process based on what you selected, create a contact in Dynamics, create an item in Visual Studio, create an item in SharePoint, et cetera. So what we'll do is we'll start with an existing flow, and we'll just customize it a little bit here. So let me go ahead and select this one. And what I'll do is I'll just delete this, and we'll go add it in a second here. So what's going on here? So the first thing it's asking me to do is enter in my credentials. And that's a very important part of Flow. Credentials play a big part. Now, when a Flow is invoked, it's using my credentials. I talked about it earlier. Um, the important, from a design philosophy perspective, in Flow, we're trying to help you automate that anything you could do manually. So in this case, I could manually select a row and put it into SharePoint. Uh, the selection of that row would be done using my credentials. Creation in SharePoint would be done my credentials as well. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just authenticating against each of those services so I can see what are the different um, options in terms of the site, in terms of the file, uh, in terms of the list that I'm connecting to in SharePoint. So give it a second here. Okay. So what it's doing is it's connecting to um, this site in SharePoint. Uh, to the documents library for this file. All of this is pre-populated for me. Um, and it's also selected table one. In addition, I can specify some manual outputs. These are the outputs that the invoker of the flow will be prompted for. And we'll see that in just a second. I can add other types of outputs if I want. I can add a text output. I can add a file output, an email, et cetera. So this is essentially my trigger. My action in this case creates an item in SharePoint. So it's pointing to a list called Turbine Energy Distribution. Now, this Turbine Energy Distribution has certain inputs, like week, region value, energy needed, min energy, max energy, et cetera. So if I click on one of these fields, I see a variety of outputs. Now, these are, uh, outputs are sourced from three sources. One, it's my Excel spreadsheet right here. So I have, notice how uh, there's a one-to-one -one mapping between week and region and min energy, max energy, target energy, et cetera. 
In addition, I also have the manual output that was specified as part of my trigger. And furthermore, I also have a timestamp, a user email, a user name, and a user ID. So I also have context of who is invoking the flow. Um, could be necessary, for example, if you want to select something, you want to post it somewhere, but you want to send yourself an email, for instance, um, alerting you that the, 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 you know, the item was successfully posted somewhere. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add an action that's going to post to Teams. I'll just type in post Teams. And the first thing it prompts me to do is select my team ID. So I'm going to go ahead and select Kronos Energy. And it's going to ask me for my channel. So I'll go ahead and post this in the operations planning channel. And I'm now going to type in a message. So what I'm going to say is, hi team. I've posted the energy targets. for the week of. Now, instead of just putting in like a giant link or putting in some text value, I can actually put in a hyperlink. So what I'll do is I'll do an a href equals to. We'll include a link to the item. So we've created an item in SharePoint. Now let's include a link to it. And I'll also throw in the week from Excel. So I'll go ahead and throw this. And I'll just end this. In addition, I'm also going to include in a message that the invoker is going to provide when they run the flow. So I'll go ahead and put message here. OK, so let's, let's go ahead and save this flow. And we'll run it on the spreadsheet. So let's go ahead and click Run. The first thing it's going to do is it's going to prompt me to enter in a message. So I'm going to say, Sorry for the delay in getting this out. I've been heads down in preparation for some demos about energy. So we'll go ahead and run this flow. Now, the first thing it does is it tells me uh, which row was selected. So it's a visual confirmation that's running on row number seven. I can also go in and inspect how the flow is doing. So this is actually applicable to all of our flows. You can see a rich history of uh, when the flow ran, whether it succeeded or failed, how long it ran for. Um, and if you drill down deeper, you can also see the inputs and outputs of each action. There you go, inputs and outputs. And the message was posted. Now, if I switch over to my team, Lo and behold, hi team, I've posted the energy targets for the week of May 6th to May 12th. It also includes the message that I typed in in Excel. If I click on this hyperlink here, it opens up SharePoint, and the information is accurately entered for me. So I have the energy needed, the minimum energy, the maximum energy, et cetera. Now, we showed you an example of taking your data from Excel, putting it into SharePoint, and then moving it to Teams as well. Uh, but you can actually connect to a wide array of services and customize the flow to suit your needs. What do you guys think so far? Cool? Yes? No? Yes? OK. Um, so no conversation about Office 365 and Flow would be complete without talking about SharePoint. SharePoint loves Flow, and Flow loves SharePoint. It's not just us saying it. The SharePoint team says it too. This mutual love uh, comes in two shapes. Uh, one is a connector, a first class connector experience in Flow. Now, this is actually one of our most complete connectors. It has a ton of triggers, a ton of actions as well, and it's something that we're continually investing in. In terms of triggers, we have triggers for a selected item. So you have the manual integration, just like in Excel. We have when a file is created, when a file is modified, when an item is created, when an item is modified. Uh, we're just introducing an item deleted trigger as well. On the action side, you can interact with files, you can interact with items, as well as attachments in terms of creating them, uh, editing them, as well as deleting them. A new thing that we just introduced a couple of months ago is the ability to change your content approval status. For those of you that have uh, content approvals turned on in your lists and libraries, you can now update the sta status programmatically through Flow. And just last week, we added an HTTP REST action. 
What that allows you to do is now you can essentially connect to any REST API exposed by SharePoint. So if there's something that's not exposed in our list of triggers and actions, by all means, you can use the HTTP REST action to go in and fill that need. We also have read-write support for native SharePoint column types like people, like choice, like lookup, taxonomy, attachments, et cetera. For those of you that are connecting to SharePoint, uh, I'm sure the next statement is going to uh, surprise you and, delete, uh, and hopefully delight you. Uh, we are working very hard on write support for multi-value types, and it's coming very, very, very soon. Uh, I've seen it work in our preview environment, so just stay tuned. It's coming. We've heard your feedback loud and clear. It's coming. Uh, a little later in the year, we're also going to have the ability to set permissions on items. So if an item gets modified, for instance, or if a new item gets added, you can change its permissions and make sure that's either locked down or open uh, based on your requirements. A little later in the year, we'll also have the ability to move files or items. So you can move it from one uh, SharePoint list or site to another. Now, we talked about our mutual admiration for SharePoint. Uh, another way we show that is through an integration in modern lists and libraries. Um, so you can create flows directly from within SharePoint. Uh, you can, two types of flows, flows that run in the background, when an item is created, item is modified, deleted, et cetera, or flows that run on a selected item, similar to what I showed in Excel. So um, how do we do the manual integration? It's through a launch panel in SharePoint, similar to Excel. Create flows that prompt for information. You run the flow uh, as the user starting the flow, and this is integrated into both lists and libraries. Now, speaking of SharePoint and talking about manual integration, uh, there's a new concept that I want to introduce. And this is brand new. This is, this is rolling out this week. Uh, we now have a notion of flows owned by lists and libraries. So what does that mean? So we talked about earlier that flows can be shared in two ways. They can either be owned by somebody, or you can give them run-only permissions. Now, traditionally, up until today, you had to share the flow with an individual or with a security group. Well, no more. You can actually now share a flow with a list or a library. So everybody that has access to that list or library will automatically get access to that flow. You don't have to worry about membership changing on the flow. You just have to worry about SharePoint. And if, for example, they lose their access, no worries. We'll take care of it on the flow side. Every time somebody's trying to run the flow or edit the flow, we'll check their access in SharePoint and make sure that they have the right privileges to either run or edit that flow. Now, no conversation would be complete. No conversation about SharePoint would be complete without talking about approvals. Approval processes are integral to all businesses. In fact, Emma and I are here because somebody approved that we should be here. In fact, Ryan approved that we should be here. Uh, approvals come in all shapes and sizes. Um, they could come in terms of HR request forms for vacation, for travel authorization, for expenses, mileage reimbursement, et cetera. It could also be for documents like contracts, specs, designs, sales codes, et cetera. Flow is a spiritual successor to SharePoint Designer. Again, that's not me saying it. This is what, what everybody says, including the SharePoint team. Approvals were by far the most common scenario in SharePoint Designer. So it was almost incumbent upon us as a team, as a product, to come up with a kick-ass experience for approvals. And we think we've done that with a modern approvals experience in Flow. Now, the modern approvals experience is designed for data in SharePoint, but it's also scalable for Dynamics 365, for Forms, for SQL, and so forth and so on. Any of the services that Flow uses, you can use it to connect to modern approvals. When an approval is assigned, you can view your sent and receive requests in a unified approval center. If you're used to SharePoint Designer, you no longer have to worry about a task list for every list or a task list for every document library. You now have a single place where you can view all of your approval requests. If you're mobile, you can do your approvals on the go from your phone or directly from your inbox. Now, these approval processes can be customized. It can be, you can have sequential or hierarchical approvals, you can have parallel approvals. You can also have approvals where everybody has to approve before it's considered an approved process. Very recently, we added the ability to see your um, history of approvals. So you can see both your sent and receive requests uh, and both past and present requests. You can reassign approvals. For example, if uh, you feel like you don't have enough context on something, you can delegate it to somebody else in your organization. And lastly, we also added support for markdown in approval details. So for a lot of you that have used approvals, that have used Flow, 
Um, up until recently, our markdown capabilities or our capabilities were a little limited. Um, you couldn't, for example, bold things or italicize things, add emphasis, unordered list, ordered list, etc. No more. With Markdown, you can uh, format your email to your fancy. So leveraging the Flow launch panel, leveraging modern approvals experience, and the ability to share your flows with lists and libraries, we've just rolled out an out-of-box request sign-off flow on all modern SharePoint lists and libraries. This has been released at first release, and it's coming to everybody very soon. The idea here is that for a selected item or for a selected file, you can click on the flow menu, click on request sign off, and get approval from anybody in your organization. You just enter in the name of the approver, enter in a message, and the status of that approval is tracked in a sign off status column. Once an approval is conducted, the initiator gets an email with details about what that person said um, as they did their approval. So let's see that in action. We'll also look at another flow and how you can use SharePoint to send out weekly digests. Oops. Okay. So I'm here in. Um, so our our uh, business analyst. Uh, put their inputs into the Excel spreadsheet. And um, once that flow ran, it created a new item in the turbine energy distribution. As the operations capacity manager, I'm going to look at this data and I'm going to say, OK, um, I now know that I need to generate about 115 megawatts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this item. I'm going to edit a little bit. And I'm going to determine which turbines are going to help me generate that energy. So here we have 10 turbines. Go ahead and select, hit save. These turbines get updated. And within a few seconds, I have a flow running in the background that's also going to go into the turbines list. It's going to pull in the max output capacity of each of these turbines. And it's going to sum them up together and update my list. Lo and behold, it automatically calculated that, I, uh, that based on my turbine selection, using the five Chetwind uh, turbines, uh, it's going to generate, oh, it hasn't ran yet, it will generate uh, 120 megawatts of energy. I love how the UI just automatically updates, so I don't have to worry about it. OK, now what I want to do is I want to send this, um, this request, this, this item, out, to uh, out for approval from my manager. Because I've selected certain turbines, I just want to make sure that I'm doing the right thing. I can do that by using the flow integration. I'll click on flow here and click on the request sign off option. And I'm going to send it out for approval to Jason Moore. And I'm going to say, hey, Jason, could you please approve my selection of turbines for this week? Please. Please. We'll go ahead and run this flow. Now, what's happening in the background is that it's going to send an approval request to Jason. So Jason is going to get a mail in his inbox, uh, which will allow him to approve and reject and provide his inputs. In addition, as the initiator, I can go into the approval center and see the status of this particular approval request. So I switch over to flow here and go into approvals. And look at sent requests and scroll all the way down. There we go. I see that an approval request was initiated. It included details. Uh, the message that I typed in it also has a link. Now switch over to Jason's profile. And there we go. We have an approval request. Um, now notice how the details map to exactly what I typed in, in in SharePoint. Here, what I can do is I can click on this link, make sure that everything looks appropriate. I can go ahead and click Approve. So I'm going to say, Looks great. And go ahead and submit this. Now, once this approval request is processed, back in SharePoint, uh, my list is going to get updated. And it's going to reflect the status of what the approver said, said approved. In addition, I'm going to get an email with details about what the approver said. There we go. 
Now, while I'm here, I want to show you a couple of um, demos. So we'll walk through this fairly quickly. But here, here's how I was automatically calculating the energy, the total energy per, uh, uh, the, the total energy depending on which turbines it's selected. So here, when an item is created or modified in my turbine energy distribution list, I'm initializing a variable. The variables is a brand new concept in Flow. We just rolled it out a couple of months ago. Variables can be of type integer, boolean, float, string, object, array, etc. I'm iterating over my turbines. Now, turbines here is a lookup to my turbines list. I mentioned earlier that you can natively connect to all of the SharePoint uh, data types. Uh, this is an example of that. I'm then going to fetch the turbine information. And I'm just going to increment my variables. So I'm going to, first and foremost, I'm going to cast, let's look at this expression. I'm going to convert the max output capacity into an integer. And I'm going to increment my variable, my total energy sum. And then I'm just going to write that back into my SharePoint list. There's another flow that I wanted to show you real quickly. It was also how you can send weekly digests. Now, we have inspections. So we have our turbines. We have turbine energy requested. We also have inspection officers that go out and look at those turbines. Now, based on those turbines, we want to send out inspections of, how those, uh, of what was performed. We'll take a quick look at what that flow looks like. So I'm going to run a flow every week at 9 AM on Monday. And I can configure this if necessary. I'm going to get items from SharePoint. I'm going to use an OData filter query here. So I'm going to get just the items where the last inspection date is greater than seven days ago and less than today. So here, I have an expression like add days to UTC now, minus seven. Uh, it's in a specific format, uh, year, 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 month, date, date. And I'm going to say that it should be less than today's date. Once I've done that, I'm going to use a select statement. So select just allows me to pick the particular values that I need from the array that's returned here. I'm going to select turbine, fault code, and description. I'm going to create an HTML table out of it. I'm going to include my headers and make the columns automatic. And finally, I'm going to send an email to Jason M with the inspections that were conducted last week. Now, you'll notice here that I'm, I have full flexibility of, over what the email looks like. Um, I just have to include HTML. Now, this is going to get better over time. We'll give you the ability in the future to use things like a bold button, italics, et cetera. But for now, you have to deal with HTML. So let's go ahead and click Test and say, I'll perform the trigger action. For those of you that have used Flow, you'll notice that uh, testing a Flow is actually a brand new capability we added about a week ago. It gives you the ability to test your Flows in line. And you can either use, uh, you can perform the trigger action yourself, or you can use your existing, uh, existing runs. So here, the flow ran, and it gave me um, a, a detailed report of all of my turbine inspections. So let's head back into PowerPoint. And let's get a sense of how do I build an application that will allow my inspection officers to enter in inspections. And Emma's going to show us that using Power Apps. All right. So we've talked a lot about Flow so far, and now let's dive in a little more into Power Apps. And for those of you who came into the room not knowing what it is, let's go and give you a little bit of an introduction. So Power Apps it gives you the advantage of having a visual designer where you can craft forms and screens. And you can see exactly what the app is going to look like. So you can insert those drop downs and galleries and different colors and shapes and rectangles to make up what you want your application to look like. Now, you can't just have a PowerPoint screen. You want it to actually be able to do things. And so in Power Apps, you have an Excel-inspired expression language to allow you to go and build up that logic to do those table joins, to call different things, to navigate around your app. You're also able to take advantage of the in-device capabilities where the apps are able to run. So you can add cameras and GPS and use pen controls for situations where you'd want to have somebody sign a signature on your app. Um, and then you're also able to go and extend what that app can do and what it connects to with all of those data sources. All right, so now there's obviously a wide variety of applications that you could go and build using Power Apps. 
there's a whole sophistication curve of what it can do. So you can customize embedded forms on SharePoint or other data sources like Excel. You can also build simple line of business apps for classrooms and check-ins and checkouts. Uh, asset checkout is a common scenario we see. You can also go deeper and build more advanced line of business apps, such as pharmaceutical sales, tracking leads, and other items such as this. And then you can go even deeper and do more mission critical inspections and, <laughs> and do all sorts of different mature items like that with the enterprise capability that PowerApps is able to provide. And then, of course, you can have apps all over your company deeply integrated in with each other, linking to each other, creating a cohesive experience across your entire business scenario. Now, really, how this is achieved is being able to include multiple data sources in one app. So multiple data sources, this means data mashup. So if you have data silo, you know you have your SQL on-prem server, you have your Azure Active Directory, how are these things going to play together? Because ultimately, people touch a lot of different systems for all the tasks that they do in their everyday jobs. Being able to take those previously siloed applications and create a cohesive single application for all of these tasks allows everyone in the company to be more productive. Now, we have all of these great 200 whatever connectors. I don't know how many there are now. 221 as of today. 221 as of today, excellent. Uh, you can also build your own custom API, build a JSON Swagger file on top of your REST API and bring your own connections to the table to use inside of PowerApps on top of all the other connections we provide. Now that easy data management, those Excel-like formulas, will allow you to be able to filter and sort, look up, join all those different common functions you do when you're working with data as well. Now, really, remember we said business software is hard? Managing things cross-platform is hard, and that's why PowerApps allows you to be able to publish apps instantly for web and mobile. So the Power App you're building on that screen is a core app, there's a core app definition that's in a container and it's designed in React, React Native to be fast and flexible. And so you're able to use the app on the web, play it in a browser, but there's also an app on iOS and Android, a Power Apps app, where you can see all the apps that have been shared with you and access them all there. Now, this means that there's no app store lead time required, as developers know, and you're able to get the apps to your company and employees and whoever wants to use them right away. Also, one of the, the pains of business software tends to be that enterprise grade management and control. So PowerApps has its, all its identities managed through the Azure Active Directory, which, which allows you to have those security and easy sharing across other members in your organization. There's also a unified admin center where you can manage all those apps, see different logs and usage analytics, as well as manage the different security and permissions that each app has. Now, PowerApps is also designed to assist in GDPR compliance, as well as creating accessible PowerApps for everyone to use. Okay, we talked, that gives a brief overview of what PowerApps is and what it can do. Let's talk more about extending Office 365. So people have been extending the Office suite forever. I think uh, some that easy come to mind are Excel and Visual Basic. Since the beginning of time, that's what people have been editing, as well as a multitude of other different sources. And Power Apps really lends itself well to customizing further on those ideas. So you're able to embed the Power Apps that you're building with the tools that you're already using. So this example is customizing a SharePoint form. You can customize a form using the data on the SharePoint list and embed it right there in SharePoint. This allows you to bring the richness of all those data connections and you know, creating a more desktop full experience for people who are filling in information on SharePoint. They're already going there, now you can make their experience a little bit better. You're also able to embed these apps in Power BI and Teams. So remember back when we were talking about the business application platform, Power BI has dashboards that can report different analytics. 
And so it would be very useful to be able to take action on those analytics. You know, I'm tracking the amount of leads coming in uh, from my company, from various sales workers. I'd love to be able to rate in line, send an email with the data that I'm seeing, and take action on those. Now, Teams is also a great and logical place to be able to bring in different customized apps. Our team actually has a, a release trains power app that we built in order to track things that are being sent out every week. And so we can keep track of what train is at what station. Now, everyone is on our Teams channel and everyone can have access right there in line and see all the live information there and we can message about it. So we know that a lot of different products exist for customizing Office. Most notably, InfoPath and Access Web Apps have built up a treasure trove of forms and app applications, and they have an awesome community. However, there's no new version supported, uh, no new versions that are coming out, although they'll be supported for a little while longer. And Power Apps is really striving to be able to address those scenarios for both of these communities as well as bring in all of those other rich capabilities and the goodness that comes from the rest of the platform. Now, you're also able to leverage the power of Microsoft Graph. For those of you who are like, huh, what's Microsoft Graph? There's a lot of other sessions going on today um, and the rest of the days here about it. So it's the data substrate and a lot of, and all of the APIs that make up the Office applications. So the built-in connectivity with the connectors that we have allows you to easily access that data. Now, we've actually gone and built uh, a bunch of sample apps, 10 of them that are available for you to see what Power Apps can do combined with the power of Microsoft Graph. And I'd like to walk through one with you guys right now. Yes. Eight. Alrighty. So here we're on the Power Apps homepage where you can see all of your different apps. There's multiple ways to create an app. So you can start from a blank canvas and design it exactly how you'd like or start from your data. And all of these other tiles that are on here are the different sample apps where you can see and get inspired of what Power Apps can do. So if I click this office pivot right here, um, these, this is a filter to allow you to see all the sample apps that are built using Office 365. The one I want to show you today is onboarding tasks. So this one actually allows new team members to be able to update their Office 365 profile and profile picture. Everyone knows the pain of trying to update your profile picture and having it show up in some places and not in others. By using the Microsoft Graph API, you're able to get it to everywhere all at once. So this app here, if we notice, I just clicked and it played, and it plays right in place for me to get an idea of what it can do for me. I'm also able to make this app and then pull it up in the Power Apps authoring experience uh, for myself to edit and use. I can use this right out of the box. It, it works for me. Uh, these are all the members on my team uh, that I'm going to be working with. So in this Power Apps authoring experience, we can see on the left here, I have all of my different screens that are available. It's very reminiscent of PowerPoint. And I also have all the controls that make up these screens. Now, if I go to my profile screen, I can walk through a little more what my app can do there. So on this screen, um, I'm able to also play my app to, to get it to fill with the data that it's pulling. So I can set my company profile photo, and there's this to-do list that's here. This is actually connecting to Office uh, or Outlook tasks, but you could easily see how I could swap this out and use Planner or To-Do or any of those other uh, task management systems. And there's also another very good view available in this app, and that's my Teams view. So if I go here to my team screen, it'll actually pull in all of the people. I have my manager and the, my peers, and I also have information about their profiles on the right-hand side. 
This is pulling entirely from Office 365 users. So this is a very helpful view for a new person to a team to know who's who and their contact information, and maybe their bio if they filled it out. Now this part right here works closely with this is really the, the part that gets me excited about Microsoft Graphs integration. So what this is here, if you notice, these people aren't the same people that are on my team. These people are the people that are most relevant to me. Since Microsoft Graph has the data substrate, they can go and tell and see, oh, I've sent this person a lot of emails and I've spent a lot of meeting time with them. They're probably pretty relevant to my job and what I'm doing. Being able to serve up this information is very helpful in all sorts of different application scenarios. So let's dive into a little bit about how this was accomplished. So I've inserted a gallery control here, and in Power Apps, using the expression language, I'm able to set variables, so I'm pulling my user ID, and I'm also able to say, if I haven't selected another peer, I just use my own ID, and then I create a collection. A collection in Power Apps is local storage within the app of whatever I fill it with. So I'm filling it, in this case, with the Office 365 users relevant people call. And I can see right here that it's just a couple lines of expression in order to be able to do that. Now there's also some pretty good IntelliSense going on here, letting me know how to fill it out. So if I'm connected right after Office 365 users, I can see the other different operations that I'm able to do. I can pull my profile, relevant people, test connection, upload a photo, and all sorts of other different operations I can do here. Some other interesting ones that you'd probably want to check out are trending documents. So you've all been on Microsoft Delve and been able to see what other people are working on. I can now also access that from within my app. Which is not creepy at all. Which is not creepy at all. <laughs> um, yeah, so we can head back to our PowerPoint and because no conversation, as we said, would be complete without talking about SharePoint like we covered before. So we've talked about the customized forms that we've been able to do to really take advantage of those Power Apps controls and the variety of data sources, pulling in maps and weather and other visuals in my form to help me fill out the data that I need to make. Now, we've heard from the SharePoint community, <laughs> we've heard and heard and heard that attachment support is needed. And as of a little while ago, it went live, and it's only going to get better. So using Power Apps functionalities to be able to upload photos and files from your device into your SharePoint list is a mainline scenario. And I'm very happy that it's available now for all of you. Also today, for the very first time, announcing Power Apps as web parts in SharePoint pages and sites. So it go, it's live like as of today. If you were on a first release, you might have experienced it in the last week but it's available today, and so I'm gonna show it to you. So basically, this allows you on your SharePoint page to be able to embed your custom app just by including the web link of where it lives, and it will appear right there in line in the page. This is so exciting for everyone, <laughs> and I'm, I'm so excited about it, but bringing the ability to allow people who are already going to SharePoint sites and pages to look at news and other items, well, you can serve up a customized experience for all those people. You know, if you're an event manager, you can embed a Power App to book a room if, if that's needed. You can also pull in other different sentiment and social media sources. So if you wanna serve up a customized view of Twitter or Yammer or anything else through your Power App, you can embed it in this page as well. Now I'm going to build a quick power app and kind of tweak it a little and then embed it in all sorts of places for you. <laughs> so we're gonna go back to our Cronus Energy scenario. So just to recap, we had a commercial analyst filling out information in Excel that was then sent to SharePoint where our capacity manager could assign different turbines to ensure we met those energy requirements. 
Now, every company has some inspectors and auditors that need to go and keep track of and inspect things that may be wrong with these turbines. And so we have our list of turbines, some information about them, uh, out capacity, latitude, longitude. And you'll notice that our turbines are very high output capacity. It's because uh, they were made with technology from Wakanda. Wakanda for up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is. You know. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so we have turbine inspections as well. So this is the data that's living, the turbine that's inspected, the dates, repair required, uh, and different fault codes associated with, with that. Now, I've already spun up a little quick app before this uh, so we can get further into some demos. So we can see here, Cronus Energy, new inspection, um, and I can go and see my list of turbines to choose from. So that's that turbine list that I've connected to. And then I can also go in and actually fill out the inspection list that's here as well. But we can make this experience a little bit better for our inspection officer. So on this page, remember in that SharePoint list, we had the latitude and longitude. Well, we're able to pull in into this list a map to help out our site inspector to know where they're going and to see where the turbine is. So in our gallery control here, we can insert an image. So it's just a blank image that it'll insert because I haven't hooked it up to anything yet. So I can position it as I like here. And then the image that I want it to pull from is I'm going to use a Bing Maps URL in order to do this. So I've already gone and taken the formula that I need here. Expand. So this is the URL to Bing Maps, the type of map. And I'm using in from this list this item dot latitude, which is calling that row in SharePoint for each item in this gallery, and this item dot longitude, which is calling the longitude column in that SharePoint list for the, that row. And we can also have in our call here different sizes, so I can change how zoomed in I am in or out. And as we can see, it's executing live right away, pulling in that data to help me see visually what I'm designing. So yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> and so I can make this also a little better. I can use the camera functionalities that are available in Power Apps to be able to take pictures and include them in my SharePoint list. So I've created a screen for using my camera. So I can insert my camera control here, and it'll appear right there. And I have my thing blocking it, but there I am. And there we go. So now my camera control is on the screen, and we need a way to collect the pictures that I'm taking. So this, this is taking pictures as I'm selecting the camera control on the screen. But it's not very useful unless we can do something with them. And so I'm going to create a collection. We, if we remember, a collection is the local storage of photos that are a local storage within the app that I'm going to fill with photos. So on selecting of this action property for this control, I can say collect, and I'll name my collection to be inspection photos. And I want it to take the camera controls photos and fill them in there. There we go. Inspection photos, collect up oh, its photo, photos. There, perfect. So now, if I take photos, um, it'll be taken in the collection. So if I go back in my Power App and look in my collections, I should see different photos that I've taken. Now I can also display this information using a gallery. So if I insert a gallery below, to allow the inspector to know what photos they've actually taken. And so here we can see that I can connect to a data source and choose a layout and choose what will show here. So I can just go and select that inspection photos collection that I just created. And if I select that, it appears below the camera. So and I can fill out with more photos as well. 
all sorts of photos of me looking into the camera. <laughs> and there we go. So if we notice how quick that was to be able to use the device functionalities and collect those photos, um, we can also use them to upload our attachments into the gallery. Um, and so I, I'll just run through it real, real quick to show that it works. <laughs> Um, so if we look here at my Cronus Energy turbine inspections that are here, um, I'll go and fill out a new one. Uh, we'll go back home screen, play, new inspection, have here, we'll, we'll fill out Peace River 2 we're inspecting. Last inspection date pulls today, there's no repair required. Um, no effort, description, everything looks great. Probably don't need to attach a photo for that one. So I'll submit that inspection and it's all hooked up and I should see it appear right here. Peace River, everything looks great. Now I'm going to turn it back uh, to Merwan so we can talk about how you can use and plug into this ecosystem using Azure Functions and custom connectors. Thank you, Emma. So what we've seen so far is how you can build a flow. We've also looked at um, how you can build a power app. The next thing we want to talk about is how do you, as a professional developer, plug into this ecosystem? Well, the best way to do that is by building a connector. What is a connector? Connectors are wrappers around a web API that allows it to connect to flow, Logic Apps, and Power Apps. So all three products use the same exact interface. In fact, all of these services that you see in Flow today started off and are connectors. So what's the benefit? Why build a connector? Well, if you're an enterprise developer, you're simplifying automation and connectivity for your users. If you have a line of business existing API, if you have something that is on-premise, you can use a custom connector to now enable connectivity for your citizen developers. If you're a uh, ISV, you can expand the number of services that you integrate with. So you don't have to worry about sending a text message or connecting to Teams, connecting to Yammer, or Twitter, so forth and so on. You can automatically leverage the connectivity that we offer through Power Apps and Flow and instantly be able to connect to those services. You can also use it as a mechanism to increase your adoption. By virtue of being a connector exposed to all of our 1.1 million users, you automatically get exposed to all of those users who can now start to leverage your service. So how do you build a connector? Well, first and foremost, you develop a custom API. You then deploy it and validate it within your tenant. And then finally, you submit it for certification. So there's a link here. I'm going to use this fancy laser. Uh, aka.ms slash API connectors that walks you through the process of creating a custom connector. The requirements for creating a connector are very simple. Have a REST API, have a service with a REST API, and use one of the supported authentication types, API key, basic auth, OAuth2. There's a, great, there's a couple of sessions on Wednesday to talk about how to create a custom connector. So in, a little later in this presentation, we'll give you the session code and refer you to that. Now let's recap where we were. So, so far, we had our commercial analyst who was working in Excel and essentially updated the commitments for our company, for Kronos Energy. We then used a flow to put that data into SharePoint and to notify our operations capacity manager. Now this individual went in and selected the turbines that they wanted to use to meet those energy targets. We then had a field inspector that was entering in information, inspections, into a Power Apps that's running either on the web or on a phone. We now have a fourth persona. Based on an inspection, we want a way to calculate whether it's cost effective to send somebody out. It could be, for example, 3 a.m. in the morning on a Sunday and you have a turbine go down. It doesn't make sense to go in and send out somebody, to have somebody pick up a red phone and rush out, uh, because it might not be cost effective. You can wait till the end of the week when you're doing your routine inspections. Well, we can build an Azure function and expose it as a custom connector so that's leverageable in Flow and Power Apps to calculate whether it's cost effective to send out a technician. Let's see that flow in action. So 
So what I'll do first is I'll briefly talk about our Azure function here. Now, the great thing about Azure Functions is that it's a serverless offering. So there's no a DevOps that you need to worry about. You don't have to worry about setup. You don't have to worry about maintenance, et cetera. Uh, once you, you create an Azure function, you just pay for the amount of time that that function is running. In this case, I'm going to use uh, a C-sharp-based Azure function. You can also use Node and F-sharp. You can also do local development if necessary. So I have a, a function here, uh, which essentially uh, will take certain uh, inputs from uh, uh, my SharePoint list and my Power Apps, like the target energy capacity, the minimum energy capacity, how long a fix is going to take, as well as the output capacity of the turbine that's gone down. Now, based on these inputs, I'm going to do some calculations. For example, I'm going to I'm going to figure out whether it's cost efficient to send out somebody to go make a repair. So I'm essentially going to see, as a result of the turbine being down, am I below my minimum capacity? Because if I am, I'm going to be assessed a fine. So here, a fine of $10,000 by the government. If I'm not, it's OK. I'm just paying for the cost of the technician, which I'm going to have to pay a little later in the week anyways. Now, this particular uh, Azure function is exposed as a connector in Flow and Power Apps. And what this connector allows me to do is essentially document how to connect to that API and add in user-friendly uh, strings, add in a user-friendly experience so that those citizen developers within my tenant, within my organization, can connect to that API. So in this case, I've specified the authentication pipe to be no auth, but I can also change it to be either basic auth, API key, or OAuth2. And I can also play around with the definition. So in this case, um, I have four inputs, target energy capacity, min energy capacity, et cetera. I've added in user-friendly strings for each of these outputs. And I've done the same thing for the response as well. So I have cost and message. <coughs> so now I'm going to build a flow that leverages um, all of the work that I've done so far, that takes that data from SharePoint, calls the Azure function to see if it's cost effective. And if it is, it gets who's on call for the week and sends them a text message. So I have a flow here to fix or not to fix. So when an item is created, so we're looking at the turbine inspections list. Now, keep in mind that uh, Emma created a Power App for this list. So you can use a Power App to enter in this information, take pictures, et cetera. We're then, we're then going to check if the repair required is set to true. So recall that Emma had an app, uh, had a control on her phone uh, that decided whether uh, a, a repair is required or not, a toggle. Now, if a repair is required, we're going to connect to our turbine energy distribution list. We're just going to get um, the amount of energy required. We're also going to get some information from our turbine. And we're going to feed that into our custom connector, which in turn connects to the Azure function. Now, you'll notice here that um, the descriptions, the icons, the inputs, and outputs all map to what I was doing in my custom connector. I don't actually have to worry about, as a citizen developer, what the underlying Azure function is doing. All of that is documented for me by virtue of this custom connector in a really simple and consumable manner. So in here, I'm passing in all the required inputs. I'm then checking whether when this function runs, when the custom connector runs, is the message equal to yes. If it is, it means that I need to go ahead and send a technician out for repair. I'm then connecting to a new list called technicians on call. Um, and I'm trying to get the technician only for this week and this week only. For each of the technicians that return back, because there could be multiple, I'm going to send an email giving them the details about which turbine's gone down, the fault code, and the description. I'm also going to send them a text message with details about that turbine, because I want them to act on an ASAP. So let's go ahead and put this flow into test mode. And we're going to have Emma switch over to the Power App on her phone and create an inspection. And we'll see how this flow runs. Uh, what input is that? Eight, one. Oh. My phone's dead. <laughs> I'm serious. Oh. <laughs> well, in that case, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and create a new inspection. Or, um, I, hey, I can do it from Teams. We'll do it from Teams. Great. Why not? <laughs> That was totally planned. It totally planned. <laughs> so in our channel here, I can, I've embedded my Power App right in line. 
and it'll load in place and I can go and fill out that inspection. You know, the great thing about Power Apps and Flow is we can do everything, we can't charge your phone. Not yet. Yeah, that's not something that Flow can do yet. Not yet. <laughs> I can't believe it died. Okay. Or we can use the embedded web part app, which is something that I didn't show. So this here is our British Columbia region page for Cronus Energy, and I've gone ahead and embedded the app there. So I can interact with it right in place. It'll go and pull the data or pull the version of an old app. This one here should work. Maybe we should just do it with the test version. This is falling sure. apart. Sure. <laughs> Sure, so uh, what we'll uh, do is we'll just use our SharePoint list directly. So we'll go ahead and create an inspection here. Turbine inspection, we'll go with new. Let's say it's for last week or this week. We'll go with um, Peace River 003. Say repair is required. Fire, let's go with that. Or let's go with too much ice. Let's say 24 hours, description, too much ice. Not working. Ah. Go ahead and save this. As soon as this flow is saved, um, my uh, as soon as this uh, inspection is saved, my flow kicks in, um, and it calculates um, whether it's cost effective to send out somebody for repair. Uh, it is because the cost is going to be sixteen thousand dollars, so I need to go fix that ASAP. It also sends a text message to the technician that's on call who happens to share a phone number with me. Don't know how that happened, but. And we can see that I got a text message, Peace River 003 is reporting an error with fault code 100, too much ice. It also has the details, uh, like what someone had entered either in SharePoint or in a Power App. Too much ice, not working. Ah. So just to recap, um, what we saw so far was we had a Power Apps that was running on a phone that was entering in information for inspections into a SharePoint list. We then had a flow that was watching for changes. And accordingly, it called an Azure function to calculate the cost effectiveness of sending out somebody to fix that turbine. Uh, if it was cost effective, found out who's on call, and also notified an engineer to immediately go out and make a repair. So we're going to round things off, um, talking a little bit about the roadmap and also a call to action. So on the flow side, we're doing a bunch of things. We're a very agile team. We ship every week. So I won't go through everything, but a few highlights. Um, we'll be lighting up the um, out-of-box request sign-off in the coming weeks. We'll be adding multi-value read-write support for all um, SharePoint types. Um, we'll be having our Excel integration directly in Excel a little later in the year. We'll also, most importantly, be having an Azure Functions integration within Flow itself. So you don't have to worry about going to the Azure portal to create a function, exposing it as a custom connector, et cetera. You'll be able to do it directly within the context of Flow. And on the Power App side, so we also have a lot of stuff on our plate. But most recently, you're able to compose model-driven apps using the common data service and use them across platforms. Uh, that was generally available just a couple weeks ago. And next on our roadmap is improving our authoring and maker experience to make it a little more streamlined and intuitive. Something that this audience may be interested in is improving the controls and the ability to share components across apps. Um, that'll enormously help you recreate things that you've already done or not recreate things you've already done. We'll also embed, be able to embed Canvas components in those model-driven apps to bring in those richness of data sources. And on the SharePoint side, the SharePoint mobile app later in the year will be adding support for those Power Apps customized forms. Um, as well as the call to action is to go out and try it for free. Those of you who haven't played around with Power Apps or Flow, uh, you can sign up to get a community plan SKU 
uh, which will give you a free environment to go explore and learn, develop, ask questions. Uh, it's fully featured, it has all the premium connectors, and you can build all of your own custom APIs and use them there. Um, you can also use our different Power Apps and Flow communities for help. And also, we'll round it off, there's a lot of other sessions that go deeper on a lot of the stuff we skimmed over today. Yeah, um, so if you want to learn a little bit more about the custom connector that I showed, um, I talked about it in my session a little earlier in the day, so you can watch the recording. Um, one of my colleagues, Steven, will be doing a presentation tomorrow talking about business processes and approvals within Flow. Uh, we have a great session lined up around custom connectors, how you can build one, how you can publish it. Uh, we also talk about advanced app building with Power Apps in terms of expressions and rules. So we have a whole lot of sessions going on. Please do check them out as well. I'm going to leave you with one parting thought. Power Apps and Flow love you. Thank you. <laughs>